And the truth is that this category of people should be celebrated by us. A woman who's kept herself, who's honored herself, honored the memory of her husband. Your children don't have food. If you cannot help them, then leave them the way they are. It's disheartening for you to say, I want to sleep with you. It's disheartening for the mother-in-law to go in and take over everything her son worked for. When you take it over, how do you expect your children's children to eat? How do you look at a woman who is brooding, who is mourning, and tell her you're responsible for your husband's death? Maybe some people are, but not everybody does. Not every, I don't think any married woman went into the marriage to kill the husband, or went into her marriage to become a single mom, to get divorced. I don't think so. Sometimes it happens, the man walks away, and then society judges the woman. How do you judge that kind of woman? Is she driving out? Even if she did, are there no worse women and their husbands are still at home staying with them? No, it's the truth. But they have chosen that this bond will not die in their lifetime. And so I want you, everyone here, I want you to pledge within yourself that you're going to be supportive to this category of people. We are the unchurched category. You find out that you become a single mom because you're shy of what society will say, of how they will behave. We stop going to church. We stop going, yeah. We stop going. Isn't that true? We stop going to church. Oh yeah, because I mean, you look, your married friends no longer want to be friends with you. Or they begin to talk behind your back. Or they see their husband being very nice to you and they're wondering, uh, I hope you're not dating your husband. That's the reality we face. I hope you're not dating my husband. I hope no, and then you go to the man and want the man. I don't want to see you near that family, forgetting that one day it can be her turn. And sometimes, yes, we are vulnerable people, very vulnerable. But if you help us, if you sow into our lives, not just funds, love, support, prayers, we can actually stand. We're people who want to also forge ahead. We're people who want to say, you know what? This is not the end of our lives. It is just a bus stop. We're waiting for the next available bus to take us to the destination called Purpose. And the truth, she's such, I mean, I have profile. She said, um, I'm God sometimes goes on towards you so that, imagine that if she did become a widow, she probably won't have this passion. She probably wouldn't know she had the skill. She probably didn't know she had the tenacity to raise beautiful children. The things she knows today, the prayers she knows how to pray today, she probably wouldn't know how to pray now. Because the truth is that daddy and mommy, if you are together, any problem you have, you want to chit chat with your husband, you can talk to your husband. The you widow and the single mother, God, who do you chit chat with? God. So you learn how to pray. Thank you, Ma. I think you are the one she said came in and lived with her for two years. Oh, my junior sister. Your junior sister. We celebrate your junior sister with grace. We celebrate you like that. We celebrate you with support. Because without the support, we're not there. Now I want to talk to the parents as well. Your daughter goes widowed. And she finds herself becoming a single mom. Please don't let society define your actions. Take charge of that life. The truth is, my parents still parent me at over 40. At well over 40, when I first became a single mom, and I didn't know how to tell my parents that he had walked away. I suffered in penury, in pain, for six months, until one day my friend came to me and said to me, if you don't go tell your parents what you're going through, we will go tell them. And I said, no, I will go home. It's better for them to hear it from me. I went home and I told them. I remember my mom just telling me, you're not serious, you're just one of those your jokes. When the middle of the night, my father came and woke me up and said to me, what you said in the afternoon, was it true? And I said, yes. And from that day, sir, ma, they took over our lives, my life and the life of my boys. They supported me because when he left, he left with my Fatih, my friend is here, he left with my certificates, he left with my money, he left with everything that I had. The only thing that was left was two handsome boys 
and 3,000 naira to wake up to. But here I stand four years after, telling you that it is only by the grace of God and by the grace of the support that I have found. If I did not find such support, if I didn't go through what I was going through, I probably wouldn't have precious or pretty moms. I won't be a blessing to other women. I won't work their journeys with them. But I celebrate God because, you know, sometimes God needs to strip you to be able to take you to the place of assignment. Um, Jonah had to fall into the river, into the belly of the fish, to be able to fulfill his assignment. Ruth needed to be a, a widow to be able to follow up her home and be able to clean at Boaz's feet. But Boaz showed her kindness. Remember, that scripture says he gave, he allowed her to take, to gather. He allowed her to feed. And when she fed, what did she do? She still did not finish her own portion. She took it back home. That is how we were built. If you give us something here, we don't finish it. We remember we have responsibility. And you know who are we to actually judge when the Bible says, I am the husband to the widow. Who are we to judge when the Creator says, I am the father, I am the husband to the woman that was rejected by her husband, and the father of the fatherless. Who are you and I to judge this category of people? We're nobody. We're absolutely nobody because if he loves them with an, with an unending love, why can't we show them that same level of love? If you're in church, please embrace them because the truth is that we are still children of God. We're still children of God and we still must make heaven. I need you to be able to hold my hands and tell me, keep going, God is on your side. Sometimes you don't need to give me money. A phone call. Sometimes you don't need to give me money. How are you? How are the children? Sometimes it's just a beautiful smile that is required. A text message to say, you're on our minds and we're praying for you. The genuineness and the love that you show is enough as a fool. And you know, I will be accountable to you, sir, if I can see genuineness in your support. I will be accountable to you. If you ask me how are the children, and you keep asking me every time, when my children are succeeding, I will. When my children are going through tough times, I will come to you and say, sir, you're a man. Can you please mentor my children for me? When such women come, please, and please, don't feel insecure by running, telling your men to stay away. There are things that are called father figures. They can only be found in friendship. For that woman to approach your husband to mentor her children, it is because she trusts the values in your husband. It is because she realizes that you're a man of character a man of purpose. And you know what? Since there's an absence of fatherhood, I need you to be the father. I have said too much, but my prayer is that God will keep giving us the strength to forge ahead. And God will give you the beautiful heart to support and to accept this ministry that this wonderful mom has. God bless you for this. Good day, everybody, and welcome uh, to the course of Zao. My name is Chuks Ahiapo, some people call me Chukuma. Uh, I'm a pastor. I am a, a husband of Bobby's uh, work colleague. I've been asked to make a review of him. Thank you so much for the opportunity to do the review. Uh, the book was an eye-opener to me, and uh, I was just reading it, and I was saying, is this what widows go through in our society? And I became much more convinced that everybody should write a book. Everybody. Everybody should write a book. When you write and you start to tell your story, you'll be helping so many people. And I'm just looking at things 
mommy has written in this book. She shares stories about her life, about some other widows, and helping us to see ourselves is like a reflection that look, this is how.